for your passion and the way you've um, been dedicated over the last few years, and um, it's very good to see you in a suit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wasn't going to wear my speedo. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, questions or comments? Uh, Councillor Crum. Yeah, thanks, Matt. A great presentation and some really impressive figures there. Beach education up by 42% alone. Um, yeah. Everyone does like the experience rather than the classroom. I, you obviously have said <coughs> the classroom experience is important too. Um, Matt, where, in terms of your strategic foresight and understanding um, modelling like migrant population growth and their use and their desire um, to, to come to the beaches and to swim and, and the results um, for you. Are you, where, where are you getting some of that strategic foresight from? Are you, are you getting your research through a, um, a sponsored commercial partner? Is our own research <coughs> unit here helping you with some, some of that understanding? So that big data, it is difficult to come across. We actually generate our own, so every time we have a patrol on, every rescue we make, every interaction we have, we literally fill out a piece of paper, who they are, where they're from, what their age group is. Then we take hourly head counts, but we do need to continue working to make sure we're ahead of that curve and, and we know where people are looking to swim. Are they still swimming at our patrol locations? Are they attractive? And that's not saying the tail is gonna wag the dog and we're gonna follow our flags wherever the community goes, but it's saying, I think, for us, to really have an impact, we need to make sure that our messages are sticking to all of the community. We know, you know, a small portion, and it is males 25 to 37, still aren't getting the message. <coughs> the new immigrants and the migrants, they're getting it, but it's the guys in my age category, they're still diving in without thinking they're our drowning risk. And we do need to be out there, like the road tow messages are out there, and that's a lot for us to fund. So we do need to continue getting our message out there and having those important conversations. Thank you, Councillor Cashmore. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thanks, Matt, and the work you've done is well recognised around this table. Um, it's, it's a central part of the services pr to provide safety to our communities, and everyone loves the beach, simple as that. So with the growth in our population you know, at sort of record levels, and you compare that to the service that, that you're providing, have you done the headline work around baseline provision, an uplift of that provision, and projected <coughs> forward with the projected usage of the beaches, what the service requirements and costs associated with that, that you'd require. So looking forward to 10 years, baseline service, elevated service, so there are some actual choices for us and the public to be informed about and to make. So currently the organisation is working on how we do our operational allocations, what, what we value the most, and is it saying do we need to have a six month patrol at Marangi Bay, or do we need to ensure that that resource goes to Kariotahi? And admittedly, that's a difficult space for us to step into as the region is it's not showing leadership, it's directing these clubs who see themselves as autonomous on how they should be patrolling. <coughs> and to be honest, that, that's going to be a long journey. It will be a tough challenge to sit down and say to them, you as volunteers who give up your time and have the autonomy for the f to continue doing so will have to work with us. And whether it's through a committee or not, we will need to have some direction on where these resources are. They understand the principle. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's not going to be a, a short one to get the conversation going with them. Yes. Thank but it work has to be done there. Thank you. Councillor Clive. Thank you, Matt. Um, as always, fantastic job you guys do. And yeah, I come from Titarangi West yeah. Coast, and all the features are, are fierce out there. Can you just confirm um, your prioritisation as an entity, northern entity, for the clubs that really need to build new buildings, um, top three or four? I mean, now that, sorry, the one Red Beach, or one's just been finished? Yeah. So yeah. currently as it stands, Red Beach is the first off the build list, and they just have to complete their rebuild, and they've, they've been waiting for the funding to come through. So we're at the stage now we're working with council to sign the funding agreement. Red Beach will be the first cab off the rank. Next up is Kadi Kadi Surf Life Saving Club. <coughs> and part of that is provisional that they have the access built. So Auckland Council's working on the access, and we want to make sure the access is there so it doesn't lift up the building cost price. After United North, uh, after Kadi Kadi, it's looking to be United North Piha, and that's provisional because we're three to four years down the road, so it's where they get to after that and then most probably Piha Surf Life Saving Club, which only has a small rebuild. So the first two we know that are coming through are Red Beach and Kadi Kadi, and the rest two which are further down, we'll keep you updated on. Yep, thank you. Okay. Well, Red Beach has been waiting for quite some time. <laughs> I remember yeah. trying to sort that out earlier, about five years ago. So, yeah, it is a long time. 
Are there any other questions or comments? No. Well, thank you very much, Matt. As a Sorry, before I go, I'll do what I should have done at the start and introduce our chair, Blair Cranston. My apologies. Sorry. No Welcome. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> thank you. We know Matt so well because he comes to all our... Um, uh, he came to, I think, every LTP mm. workshop, whatever. So, but welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Now, do we have... Um